joining me. I'm Hannibal the Ultimate and today we're going to talk about how to make a really bad Transformer movie or specifically in reference to the Michael Bay films and the new film Transformers Age of Extinction. Now I've written specifically for you a list of 10 bullet points required to make an awful Transformers movie. First on that list is Balance out the cast with unrealistically good-looking actors with annoying actors. Because we all know that at least 90% of the male audience all have girlfriends that look exactly like Megan Fox and, uh, what's her name, Nicola Peltz. <laughs> and of course, just to balance out that unrealistic hotness, you have over here these annoying characters like Shia LaBeouf. Maybe Mark Marlborg. Mark Wahlberg, Marky Mark, maybe good, who knows. I'm going to place my money on him being bad because that's how you make a bad Transformers movie. Number two on the list is highlight the human characters as much as possible. Now this is so, so, so critical because you need to make humans or the human characters like the highlight of a Transformers movie about Transformers. That's just... 2 plus 2 equals 4. Everybody knows that. I mean, come on, a movie about Transformers that has humans in it, yes, but focuses mainly on Transformers, that's like 2 plus 2 equals 5. That's just, that doesn't make any sense. Number 3 on the list. Have robots that speak but not speak at the same time because, you know, that whole thing with Bumblebee, I mean, come on. He goes through the whole first movie without speaking, that's kind of cool, a unique character, unique Transformer, but then he gets his voice back at the end of the first movie, and then we start up the second movie and he can't talk. I mean, does he have a, a Houdini voice box? It's there, but it escapes. It's there, but it's not there at the same time? Come on. I mean, anyways, <laughs> number three, Oh, sorry. Number four, unthreatening villains. Because the only thing Megatron is good for is killing Optimus Prime when Optimus Prime's back is to Megatron. And only after Megatron's henchmen, his goons, have pretty much beat the shit out of, you know... <laughs> Pardon my French, but you know... Beat the nuts and bolts out of, Mega out of Optimus Prime because that's... And then turns out that Megatron is so threatening and so diabolical and so damaging that Optimus Prime still beats Megatron with one arm because that's a threatening villain right there for you. And even the Sentinel, come on. He has this really cool double bladed sword and a shield and then Megatron takes him out with a pistol. I mean, I guess it was a rifle. It was long enough, but still, come on, you know. Uh, <laughs> number five, do not make a movie about Transformers. Now, I must reiterate this. This is absolutely critical. When you have a movie called Transformers, you must never, ever, ever make that movie about Transformers. It just doesn't make sense. You want to make an awful Transformers movie? You make a movie that's really about the human characters. I mean, for goodness sake. You can retitle the first movie Humans instead of Transformers, you know, or Shia LaBeouf, you know, with Transformers, Shia LaBeouf colon with Transformers. <laughs> Not to drag on, here's number six. Design unattractive, spiny, prickly looking robots. I mean, they were just all over the place. They had the Megatron's face was like this. I mean, he doesn't look... They don't do this in the movie. I know I look like I'm trying to transform, but just ignore I did that. That was whack. But anyways, let's move on to the next one. Uh, number seven, focus the camera on the humans running away when the Autobots and Decepticons are shooting at each other and fighting each other. So when you want to make an awful, awful, really bad Transformers movie, I mean a Transformers movie that is so bad Halfway through the film, your audience will regret paying for the ticket. 
what you must do is every time you have a, first of all, only have two real fights between the Autobots and Decepticons. Maybe one and a half. The better, depending on how good you want to make it, you know, you want the less fights between the robots, the better. But also, especially when your robots finally do fight, you want the robots to be fighting in the background, you know, like, just like over here somewhere, but your camera's going to be centered, focused, directly on the humans running away. Because as an audience member, it's more important for me to see Shia LaBeouf and Mega Fox run away and scream and dance all the sparks and the guns. I only need to see a little bit of the Transformers. Just as long as you can show me that they're fighting, that's fine. I don't need to be thrilled with awesome action sequences. <clears throat> Just awesome explosions will do. Uh, <laughs> now, number eight. Make Optimus Prime ride Grimlock like a horse in Age of Extinction because that just sounds cool. Man, that sounds awesome. Like a horse? Psh. It's like a combination of Transformers and Hildalgo at the same time. That's, that's self-explanatory. I'm not even going to dive into that even more. Because I never even liked Optimus Prime until he got on a, a dinosaur robot like a horse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Number nine, the second most important on the list, number nine, in Age of Extinction, Galvatron is a truck when he's transformed, he's a truck. That's, that's absolutely critical for a good movie about Transformers. I mean, Megatron was a cool villain, wasn't the coolest in my opinion, I really like Unicron, but we can talk about that later. But uh, Megatron was a cool villain, you know, in the cartoon he dies. Uh, I'm sure one of you can correct me in the comment section, you know, I don't know, it's like the back of my hand, it's been a long time since I've seen it, but uh, Megatron dies and he comes back as Galvatron, and Galvatron is this badass of all badasses because he's Megatron, but he got resurrected and now he's stronger, and in the Age of Extinction movie, it's going to be even more badass because he's a truck, not, no, that's whack. But anyway, <laughs> anyways, number 10, and this is the most important out of anything in the list. Number 10 is highlight the human characters as much as possible. Now, number 10 is the same as number 2, but that's only because it's twice as valid. You need to highlight Mark Wahlberg's character and Nicola Peltz and whoever else is in the movie. You need to highlight them because you're not going to have an awful Transformer movie. If you do not highlight their characters, who knows? Maybe Mark Wahlberg might give us a freestyle. He might bring Marky Mark back. Shh. Hey, I'm telling you right now. When I see Transformers, and if, if Marky Mark breaks out into a freestyle slash music video halfway through the film, I'll go see it another five times. I'm not kidding. That's going to make it even worse. But, as you know, of course, that means that the writers think it makes that makes it that even better. But uh, <laughs> well, thank you very much for listening to the top ten things you need to make an awful Transformers movie. I'm your host, Hannibal the Ultimate, and if you ever find yourself in Hollywood, don't forget to take this list with you. Until next time. <laughs>